Hi, I'm Mr. Manoj. Uh, this is a short uh, presentation on the chemical properties and physical properties of halogens. Um, this is, well, customized for the AS syllabus 9701, but this could be used as a general information across all different kinds of boards, obviously. Um, the, the simple information is what you are expected to know about the, the halogens is, first of all, you should know uh, about the physical states at room temperatures. Uh, it's good to know that fluorine and chlorine, they are basically gases. Um, and then, uh, if you look at bromine, um, it's liquid, and when it comes to iodine, it's solid, and astatine, which is the last member of the group, is also solid state. So as you come down from fluorine to astatine, there's a change in the physical states. Uh, you could connect this to the kind of structures and forces they, they have in between. Don't forget, they're all simple molecules, which means they have weak Van der Waals forces in between. And as you come from fluorine to astatine, the number of electrons are increasing and that means the Van der Waals forces increase, they tend to be more close to each other. And so by the time you come to bromine iodine, there's a change of state from gaseous state to liquid and to solid. Now to begin with, we can also have a look at the uh, one of the very important uh, properties, something about the oxidizing tendencies. You should always remember halogens, um, for example chlorine uh, or bromine, um, Fluorine, all of them actually, they, they can easily gain electron and uh, when they gain electron um, they change um, themselves into what is called as halidines. Now you could use your oxidation number concept or electron concept to figure out what's going on. The oxidation number of chlorine is zero and the oxidation number of chloride is minus one. So zero to minus one means this is reduction and you might remember anything which gets reduced will act as an oxidizing agent. So that's why chlorine and bromine um, and so on, they act as good oxidizing agent because they can get reduced. Uh, you could use oxidation number there or you could also use the electron concept. You might remember OILRIG -I of electron. Oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining of electron. So because they're gaining electron, they're getting reduced and because they're getting reduced, they can act as an oxidizing agent. However, there's one in important information what you should keep in mind, that this oxidizing tendency uh, becomes less as you come down the halogen family. For example, uh, if you look at fluorine, it can very easily oxidize chloride, bromide, iodide, and estadide. Uh, keep in mind, they're all less reactive than fluorine. You might study uh, in earlier classes that as you go down the halogen family, the reactivity becomes less. So does the oxidizing tendency. So fluorine can oxidize all of these. Um, if you look at chlorine, it can oxidize bromide, iodide, um, and estadide, uh, the ones below it. And if you look at bromine, it can, it can only oxidize um, iodide and astatide. So clearly, as you come down the halogen family, the oxidizing tendencies are becoming less. So you might get questions like, um, for example, you might get questions like, uh, if chlorine is made to react with bromide, so do you think the reaction is possible or not? Uh, it is, because chlorine is a more powerful oxidizing agent, so it will accept the electrons from from bromide, keep in mind the more reactive non-metal gains the electron, so it changes, changes into chloride and that changes into bromine. Now what happened is oxidation number from zero became minus one, so that got reduced, so it's acting as an oxidizing agent. Bromide from negative one oxidation number becomes zero, so that got oxidized, so that's going to act as a reducing agent. But if you try to do this reaction, if you try to do this reaction, that's not going to happen because bromine is below chlorine, uh, which means uh, it's going to be less oxidizing um, agent and, uh, compared to chlorine, so that reaction is not possible. You could also understand bromine is less reactive than chlorine, so it can't do that. So that's one good question, kind of questions you should expect in the exam. The other one is about the thermal stability of hydrohalides. Now, if you look at thermal stability, this is a very repeated question which comes in the exam. Thermal stability. Now, here we are basically talking about 
thermal stability of HCl versus HBr versus HI. Uh, you should expect questions like uh, they'll give you some kind of gas jars, three gas jars, uh, each one having a particular kind of a gas. And uh, you know, the examiner might say, I'm going to introduce a hot glass rod inside. What kind of observation do you think you will see? Well, keep in mind, if you just have a data booklet, if you just very quickly have a look at your bond energies of these, and you will have an idea. Uh, this one has bond energy of 431 kilojoules per mole, and HBr has 366, and this one has 299. So as bond energies becomes less, it, you have to understand that it becomes more easier for you to break the bond. So another way to understand is uh, you could have a look at the bond length. Now, you know, as you go down the group, the bond length increases, but the distance between these two, because these atoms are becoming bigger. So if, if the longer the bond, the more easier for you to break it. So what happens here is there's no observation here. The HCl fumes continues to be as white fumes. But HBr breaks up to form H2 plus Br2. So you, you, you will get bromine vapor. And uh, bromine vapor obviously um, will, will be a typical orange or red-brown color. Uh, if you look at HI, it will also break to form H2 plus I2. So since we are talking of gaseous state, so that's, you will see purple fumes there. So that's the observation differences when it comes to thermal stability of hydrohalides. Now let's have a look at another con um, topic of concentrated H2SO4, which is a very good oxidizing agent. Concentrated H2SO4, uh, which could be um, written as H2SO4 liquid, will interact with reducing agents. Now keep in mind that the chloride, bromide and iodide are good reducing agents. To, to make uh, to understand how these interact with concentrate H2SO4, I'm going to take what is called as halide salts. So salts who can give me these halogen, these halide ions. So I'm going to take sodium chloride, sodium bromide, and sodium iodide, and try to understand what happens when each of this um, gets to react with concentrate H2SO4. What kind of observations will I get? Again, uh, very very popular exam areas. So to begin with, uh, I'm going to take the case of the Cl minus, the halide ion, uh, which will which will come from sodium chloride. So if I react sodium chloride solid with H2SO4 concentrated, what I get is NaHSO4 plus HCl. Now, keep in mind that the the uh, uh, H2SO4, it's, of course it's dibasic, when it kicks out one H plus, what is left is HSO4 one minus. So NaCl, Na is plus one, so that plus one and that minus one, they get together to form that. And the H and the Cl combine together to form this. Now that's gaseous form, so that's basically white, uh, white fumes, or you could say misty white fumes. And that's the observation. And uh, there is no further reaction between these two. So basically what we are trying to say is that Cl minus here doesn't change to Cl2. Cl minus means the oxidation number would be minus one and here the oxidation number would be zero. Minus one to zero is oxidation which means chloride never got oxidized by concentrate H2SO4. That's the point we are trying to make. Now if you look at the, the second set of um, reaction, which is the reaction of bromide salt. So let's see what happens when you interact bromide salt. I'm taking NaBr solid, reacting with H2SO4 liquid. What I get is NaHSO4, once again, and I'm going to get uh, H HBr. So that's solid there, and gas is formed. Now what happens is, H, as HBr comes out, there is a second reaction that happens. And this changes into Br2, and you get H2O plus SO2 from here. So basically what happened, the bromide, oxidation number minus one, became bromine, zero, which means it got oxidized. So bromide 
gets oxidized. So that's the uh, what we understand. But if you remember the previous equation, the chloride doesn't get oxidized. And of course, because I'm going to get bromine gas, I'll expect the um, you know the orange vapors, um, or the red brown fumes, which I'll see. And very very similar equation happens if I'm going to use um, iodide, so sodium iodide. Exactly the same set of equations. And if I'm going to use H2SO4 liquid, I will get NaHSO4 as usual, and I'm going to get here HI. Once again, there's a second reaction that happens, and HI combines with H2SO4 to form I2 plus H2O plus SO2. Now, once again, oxidation number of iodide is minus 1, and here's 0. So that means your iodide got oxidized. So what we understand that the chloride could not get oxidized, but the bromide and the iodide got oxidized. Keep in mind the oxidation number of sulfur is plus 6, and the oxidation number of sulfur here is plus 4. So that's reduction there. So every oxidizing agent gets reduced. Plus 6 becoming, um, uh, sorry, plus 6 here becoming plus 4. So every oxidizing agent gets reduced. So keep that in mind. So that's a good set of equations, uh, how to interact, uh, concentrate H2SO4 with halide salts. For the sake of practice, instead of sodium chloride, bromide and iodide, you could practice these equations using magnesium chloride, magnesium bromide and magnesium iodide. Okay, uh, there's another set of equations what we must consider, that's the reaction of chlorine with sodium hydroxide. Now, interestingly, chlorine reacts with sodium hydroxide in two different conditions. In cold conditions, you get NaCl plus NaClO plus H2O. Um, and, and in hot conditions, chlorine reacts to form NaCl, uh, but NaClO3 plus H2O. So uh, first of all, let's uh, quickly balance it. That's, there are two sodiums there, so I'm going to put here two, and that's it. And uh, to balance this one out, um, we need to put... Uh, have uh, okay, so I'm going to put five NaCl here. I mean, as as of now, if we just this is the balanced equation there. There you go. Uh, now this this is the product with cold and product with hot. The difference is is the in the oxidation number of chlorine there. So the oxidation number of chlorine here is zero, but the oxidation number of chlorine here is minus one. The oxidation number of chlorine you could work out is plus one. This is bleach actually. Um, this is bleach. And the oxidation number of chlorine, if you work out, is like one plus x minus six equals to zero. So x comes to be plus five. So that's plus five. Now, interestingly, zero to minus one is reduction. But zero to plus one is oxidation. So what you see is, strangely, same element is getting oxidized and reduced at the same time. This is called disproportionation reaction. This is a redox reaction in which the same element gets oxidized and reduced at the same time. So similar situation happening here. Zero to minus one, that's reduction, and zero to plus five, and that's oxidation. So once again, same, same substance, same element getting oxidized and reduced at the same time. That's the spelling there, disproportionation. This is disproportionation reaction. It's a redox reaction in which the same element gets oxidized and reduced at the same time. Now, towards the end of the lesson, uh, there are, there's a bunch of information which I would recommend uh, you could uh, study by yourself. That you must study the uses of halogen, the chlorine, bromine, and iodine, um, um, and the industrial applications. So that's something that you can always pick up from your textbooks. So I hope these um, set of equations and comments were useful. Um, it hopefully clears out uh, what you have to learn and makes it easy for you. Uh, don't forget you have to keep writing these equations and practice them until so, uh, you don't get them perfect. All right. Till next time. Ciao.